that tribulation is a part of training, that crushing and suffering is a part of how God develops us to become what he wants us to be. I didn't understand how to recognize him in trouble, but I kept preaching and I kept serving and I kept going on. They don't give them to you for longevity or how many years or seniority. They give you the stripes because of the battles you've endured and the things you've been through and the crushing you've gone through. And you find yourself in an emotional quicksand and you wonder if you can get out. Will this be the big one that takes me out? Will this be the big one that brings me down to my knees? Will, will I be able to stand it emotionally, mentally, spiritually? Do I really have what it takes? Not understanding that God is with you in the pain and in the suffering and in the trauma, in the childhood trauma. When the medical report comes back bad and the business comes back bad and, and you lose a loved one or you go through a painful moment in your life, that does not mean that God has abandoned you. We can sometimes feel aimless and lost and confused and uncertain and still love God. We can feel like God has abandoned us. It's okay. Even Jesus cried out on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And if Jesus had a moment like that, then, then we can expect to have moments like that. I found out that the way God rewards you for passing the last test is giving you the next test. You must understand that joy coexists with suffering that that is what the anointing is made out of. That it's made out of crushing and myrrh and bitterness and sweetness and calamus all mixed together. That if you took away the suffering, you wouldn't be anointed. You have to understand that God knows what he's doing. Joseph told his brothers about his dream. You intended to harm me, but God intended for my good. He allowed you to betray me for my good. I am stronger because of your weakness. I am stronger because of your wickedness. I am stronger because of your strife. You taught me that I didn't need you to be able to stand. You taught me that you can't vote on my favor. You taught me that my glory is not in my coat of many colors. And so I thank you for hurting me. And I thank you for crushing me. And I thank you for crushing my heart because you know what? I am broken in all the right places. All the right places like a key that unlocks a door. I'm broken just right to unlock my next dimension of grace. And you can only have that kind of faith, that kind of knowing, that kind of reality. When you agree with the Apostle Paul in Romans 8, 28, when he says that all things, not just the good things, but all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. It's working for your good when it doesn't feel good. It's working for your good when tears are running down your face. It's working for your good when you're up at three o'clock in the morning. You have to believe that it's working for your good. You have to understand that a bread maker always needs the dough. And kneading it is what makes it rise. Pressing it down is what makes it go up. Putting it up under pressure is the reality that proves that I am called according to his purpose and not my comfort. I am called according to his purpose and not my convenience that God didn't come in my life to secure my convenience, that he comes into our lives and often his will is disruptive. And when it is disruptive, sometimes it feels destructive. And you're wondering, you're, oh my God, are you killing me? When in fact, God is preparing you for something bigger than yourself and greater than yourself and stronger than yourself. And it may be years before your questions are answered and you begin to understand why you had to go through what you had to go through to get to where you had to get. And in the meantime, that's where faith operates. Faith stands in the gap between you understanding and you experiencing. 